Meanwhile, Tom Cruise is busy shooting up for the next part of the Mission Impossible series. Here's an exclusive clip from the movie. Nah, just kidding. But don't be disappointed for sure because this game is as close as a game can get to a Mission Impossible movie. Why am I saying so? You will definitely find out by the time this ends. So do watch it till the end. Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhere Bagga and let me show you this beautiful game and it had everything uh, you expect from a chess game and maybe more as well. So let's begin with this. Open starts off with e4, I respond with c6, d4 by open trying to gain the max maximum center because I haven't approached the center yet. Now I go for d5, hand here, so it's a, like a caro card structure only, nothing different, open can now exchange the pawns. Or play knight to c3, which is the main line, the Karo Khan. Uh, and now I take the pawn, which becomes the exchange variation. Opponent takes back with the knight. And here comes bishop to f5, attacking the knight straight away. And knight would generally go to g3 next, which does happen. And I have to save the bishop now. And saving with the pawn is a bad idea because then you lose the complete center. Opponent has already got one pawn in the center. And if you take back with the e, uh, pawn, then you are just giving both the central squares to the opponent. So I just got the bishop backwards onto g6, open develops the knight to f3, and generally the knight to f3 means the knight is going to come on e5 and attack the bishop. So here comes knight to d7, controlling the e5 square. So open starts with h4, which means if h5 is played, my bishop is trapped. No other square for the bishop to go. So I have to make a room for it. So h6 comes, which of course makes the space. Open place h5, I go back with the bishop, and now comes bishop to d3, asking for a bishop trade. And now I can simply trade, which is a good move as well. Open can take back with the queen. But I thought, okay, let me develop another piece. Knight to f6. What it does is that if the open does take the bishop, I'm happy taking with the knight, and then I can improve my position of the knight as well. This way I will not lose castling as well, and my piece is also developed. So here comes bishop to f4, trying to develop the dark square bishop and maybe preparing to castle queen side as well because the pawn is too advanced here on the king side. I went with e6, I have to take out my dark square bishop as well. Open plays c3. <coughs> Sorry for that. Uh, now comes queen to b6, attacking the pawn on b2. Open plays rook to b1, defending it. Here comes bishop to e7, just trying to develop the bishop, there was no other square, uh, everything else is covered by the opponent. So I have to play bishop to e7, and now I'm preparing to castle either side of the board. Open castle on the king's side, and I just played queen to a5. My idea is to attack this pawn twice, knight and queen both attacking it, uh, so I can grab the extra pawn. And here opponent plays knight to e5. At leaving the pawn on a2 because the open side is if I do attack, open can simply uh, put the bishop as well, which will attack my queen, can get the rook as well. So things like that can happen. I don't want to open up the file where I probably be castling as well eventually. So I thought, okay, let me hold on. I took the bishop out first so that my knight is also free from here. I can move my knight. Open takes back with the queen. I exchange the knight as well. Open takes back with the pawn here. Uh, we can say it's a good idea because you're opening up the queen file, but it allows me to get, to have the d5 square with the knight, which is an important square. And now I'm hitting the bishop as well. So bishop goes back to d2, having discoveries to queen in the next move, and my knight would be gone. So I have to save the queen. Queen comes to c7, attacking a pawn as well, which now gets defended with rook to e1. I have to castle, and I decided to castle on the queen side. Uh, because this bishop is eyeing on the king side, queen is also eyeing, knight is standing around, uh, ready to hop over from some places. There can be a pawn attack as well. Rooks are also centralized. So, not a good idea to castle on the king side. I castle queen side. Now, open goes with queen to f3. What it does is attacking the pawn on f7. I have to defend it. And this is my idea of defending it. Queen is defending the pawn now. It's a discovered defense, just like a discovered attack. And what I am doing is I'm also threatening to take on the knight. And I'm maybe happy doing it because my bishop isn't active anymore. Opponent saves the knight and puts on e4. And now the threat is this knight is going to trouble me from knight to d6. 
what should I do here? Because after I get a check, I'm getting a fork as well in the next move because I cannot take the knight with the queen as queen is also defending it. So I just moved away the king first, king to b8, making sure there's not a check coming for sure. So open plays g3, trying to kick my bishop backwards, which I now place on g5. I had no choice, basically. Uh, if I go on to e7, again, the same story comes up. Queen takes is bad for me. Uh, so I offered bishop trade, which I take back now, and open gets the extra pawn as well. So I'm down and out already. If you see, it's a huge attack coming on. Uh, the uh, the king side, but my king is as of now safe on the queen side. Op now I try to defend the pawn uh, because it was attacked twice. I have to defend it twice. And now open place g4, solidifying the pawn on h5 as well. I go back with the knight to e7, asking open to take here because once the open takes, I can simply move my knight back and the queen is pinned. Queen is not defended, so I can trap the queen this way or at least the knight. After knight comes here, I can simply take back with the queen and I'm happy taking it. Open side steps, understanding the threat. And now I go back to knight with knight to d5. It's a good controlling square, as I said. Knights in the center are vicious. They attack eight squares. So it, it is important to control everything which you can with your knights in the middle game. So here, my knight is pretty active, as you see. So here my open place knight to e4 again, maybe with the idea of planting the knight on d6. I went with g6 trying to open up the pawn structure, open does take, I take back. And now if you see both my rooks are in open file, one is in open file, one is in semi open because the pawn is there. So now comes knight to f6 blocking the open file. Now I can take on this knight and what happens is open takes back with the pawn. I take the queen, open takes back. And then I cannot take this pawn. This pawn will be a passed pawn, defended by the rook, and that can be tricky. So I didn't do that. I played g5 first. Opponent attacks my knight with d1, rook d1. I get back with rook d8, defending, adding another piece uh, to the, uh, in the in the open file. Open plays c4, asking me to move the knight. And now I place my knight on f4. That's why I had pushed the pawn earlier so that I can plant my knight in a more active square. And if you see a focus again coming, uh, so open sees that coming and places queen to e3. This opponent was as good as one can be trying to attack from everywhere, has seen every move that I'm, I have been playing so far. And also the queen is now active, attacking the a7. Uh, these are simply good moves. So I thought, let me trade off the rooks first trying to decrease some pressure from my side. Now, again, I was pawned down. Uh, so I have to do something here. I first of all begin with a6. Open comes with the rook to d7, uh, attacking my queen. And now queen basically has just got a couple of places to go. One can be to c8 or can be to a5. I thought a5 is better. I, at least I can attack a pawn. And if queen sometimes moves away from here, I have this check coming as well, which will be very beautiful because I have the open file control as well. So open plays a3. Again, now the threat is open is willing to play b4 as well. And I can't do much about it. I went with a knight check first, attacking the king. King goes to f1 and I come back uh, so that my rook is not just defending my knight, but has somewhere to go as well. And here comes b4 attacking my queen as expected. Now, simply I cannot go any of these squares. Every of these squares have threats. Only one square is there, a4. So I place my queen on a4. Again, I have a check coming, uh, but open has the rook in the open pile, so I can't do anything about it yet. Open place knight to h5, uh, asking for knight trades as well. Uh, and if uh, uh, And if actually I missed a mate here, because I could have just mated the opponent from uh, rook to h1, uh, but I was very much low on time and trying to save my queen here. I didn't see the mate in one immediately because I think I was very two, three seconds on the clock at that point of time. So I just moved the queen, open saves now with the knight, so I cannot checkmate the opponent. And if I take this, then I'm anyways losing it on time. And the only way to win this game is a, is a checkmate. So I have to hang in there. I cannot trade off. 
uh, I just moved with the queen in to c2, trying to threat, make some threats, maybe attacking a pawn next, uh, grabbing it with a check is one of the ideas. Uh, and my knight is close. I can have a check from here, but then again, rook can come back. Uh, queen is also there. I don't know. Queen can just simply come back to e1 as well and defend. Uh, so here, Robin tries to exchange the queens from d2, which allows me to take a pawn with a check. Robin moves side steps uh, onto g1, and here I place my queen on e4. My idea is simply if the opponent takes my knight now, I can have a checkmate with from queen to h1. So opponent didn't take here, but gives the check first. And I thought, okay, I have to save my king. No other option. I moved. I first want to take on uh, the rook with the rook. Opponent takes back with the queen. And now if you see, I'm one step away from a checkmate and my king is in a check right now. So I have to move the king first. There's no checks coming now uh, apart from here or here, which both I can simply take with both my pieces. So open doesn't have much of a choice remaining. And what's coming next is I'm threatening a checkmate. Open didn't see that coming, places queen to d2 and that was a checkmate with just 1.3 seconds left on the clock. Just like Mission Impossible, <laughs> you just win at the last moment. Somehow you manage to win. Uh, if the opponent would have taken my knight as well, I wasn't going to checkmate him with one piece. And it, it was a two and fro game. As you saw, I missed a mate in one as well. Uh, that was because of time pressure, you can say. Uh, so it was a very good game. I enjoyed it thoroughly and I hope you did as well. If you did, please do subscribe to my channel as well. And I shall see you tomorrow with some interesting and instructive content like always. Thanks for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.